Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today's video features the pinnacle of the Royal Navy cruiser line, the Tier 10 HMS Minotaur. I've been meaning to return to this line for ages now it seems, as the previous video on this line covered the HMS Neptune. You can find those links including the complete playlist in the top right. As usual I've included the full ship build including upgrades and captain skills after the main highlights. The timestamp can be seen here on screen if you wish to jump ahead at any stage or simply for your own future reference. HMS Minotaur in my humble opinion is one of the most fun cruisers to play at tier 10 in World of Warships. Despite having all the tools in her arsenal to potentially dominate and carry games, a lot of players tend to struggle with the Minotaur and the fact it has little or no armour and can be punished severely for exposing her broadside to enemy battleships or cruisers. Therein lies the answer to the root of the problem. Finding ways and positions to protect that vulnerable broadside while inflicting damage on the enemy is key to success in the Minotaur. Let's take a closer look at the Minotaur's strengths and how we can use them in our favour. There are aircraft carriers in this game with the midway on the enemy team, so I'm going to use this very effective long range AA of 6.9 kilometers to essentially form a huge AA bubble to protect the friendly Haragumo while he attempts to capture this B point. I've got a nice little position here using these islands to remain concealed, and while the fighters from the Audacious keep these enemy ships it, I'm free to lob shells over the island. It's one of the great characteristics of the Minotaur's guns. They have these floaty arcs that enables you. I was briefly spotted there. Smolensk did get off a quick volley over that island. Did get a couple of citadels on him there. I did quickly smoke up there just in case. I am centrally located. I wasn't quite sure what was actually spotting me there. It was hard spotting and not plain spotting. Our first continues to push into the capture point. He is down to half health. Our Haragumo is not going anywhere it would seem. I'm just going to drop some preemptive torps on that corner. Our first has fighter group up try and get rid of those planes with the AA. Enemy Minotaur was spotted briefly pushing in there on the right side of that capture point and it does make me a little bit apprehensive that he has gone dark. Yamato briefly spotted. Salvo out there. I'm just going to fall back and relocate behind my smokescreen. I wouldn't go as far as say my spidey sense is tingling, but I'm just a bit wary of where that enemy Minotaur is, and I don't want to get caught by surprise. I'm just going to drop another couple of sets of torps on that corner, just in case. There And there's the enemy Mino. He was pushing forward. Just going to start angling away. That curve first would seem to be pushing the corner. Just waiting for that Mino to appear. I'm detected. The Mino has continued to push. He would seem to be angling away, showing full broadside. Just one citadel. He does get hit by one of my friendly battleships and I'm able to quickly finish him off. Car first has turned that corner. He's almost guaranteed to be running hydroacoustic search. He does manage to slip, unfortunately for me, to those torpedoes. He takes out our friendly Smolensk. I've managed to drop detection here. I don't want to be taking the curve first on in an open gunfight at this range. I'm still within Capture the firing range of his secondaries, which can be quite devastating to a Mino and its light armour. I'll quickly smoke up here again. Smoke generator started. 
and start putting some pressure on this car first. Friendly Haragumo, he has decided he's not long for this world, he doesn't want to run. And he's literally held his position. While this curve first has been spotted virtually all the time, pushing around. He did manage to get a torp hit on that curve first. He's still flooding. Over, under aiming slightly, I'm hitting his front turrets. Just need to adjust and get those superstructure hits. This Haragumo, not quite sure what's going on there, but he goes down to the enemy Smolensk. The car first rams the Haragumo wreck. Makes it even easier to land shells on the superstructure. Audacious coming in with a torpedo strike. A couple of quick salvos, takes out the enemy car first. At least that's the main firepower from the center gone. Well, there was a Yamato located somewhere back there on the sea line. I'll drop some torps on that Smolensk. If he happens to pop around that corner. On a large map like Greece, you will often see lots of individual fights taking place across the map. You can see now on the left flank, our own gross curve first is seriously overextended with the majority of our fleet virtually behind the spawn and not in a very good position. I'm going to try and urge these guys to push up. Enemy Smolensk has smoked up and he's left himself now in a vulnerable position. This is where I can attempt to make a play here and potentially take him out very quickly. It would seem I'm garnishing a little bit of support. Hindenburg and Republic would seem to be following. Our gross car first on the left flank is about to go down. They do trade though, the Republic goes down as well. But we're in a position now where the enemy has three of the capture points and we are losing ground on the right flank now as well. Enemy Smolensk is still firing from that smoke screen. He is blissfully unaware of my approaching presence. There are midway dive bombers coming in from the right. They could potentially remove any element of surprise I have here. I just get plane detected just as I manage to detect the Smolensk. Quick couple of salvos, knock out his engine. Second salvo, knocks him out permanently. He was caught so, so much by surprise he only managed to get one salvo off. And now we can attempt to take this capture point. Gearing is coming in from the right flank for support. Public and Hindenburg still pushing up. Our conqueror on the right is in full retreat and is quite low, so we're probably going to lose him to get detected again. So there is a destroyer in front of me. Just going to use this wreck to throw off any potential torps that might be on the way. I'm going to keep manoeuvring, throw off his aim as much as possible. Something is smoking up there. Waiting for my hydro to come off cooldown. Incoming torps. And this is where I like having vigilance. Pop the hydro acoustic search. Gearing is spotted in the smoke. And this is where the Minotaur is absolutely devastating against enemy destroyers. He gets pretty deleted in a matter of seconds. There is nothing more deadly for a destroyer than the sight of an onrushing Minotaur in this game. Put some shells out on this enemy Yamato, try and secure this kill. Just gonna slow down here, continue capping this point. 
Yeah, Mato is trying to slip in behind that island, but he's unable to escape. We secure the kill and get the Kraken unleashed toward. The Daring is attempting to rush our Audacious. It's quite difficult to land shells on a maneuverable destroyer at this range. I'll continue to keep him under fire nonetheless. Managed to get the capture point. And the Audacious takes out the Daring with his attack planes. You can see the Hindenburg is approaching the A point, so it's pointless both of us capping. Quickly turn here and start engaging the remaining ships on the C point. You can see here the grey turning circle of the Minotaur. You can see full speed turn just might even be able to avoid the gearing wreck. No, not quite. Enemy dive bombers from the midway coming in. He doesn't want to have anything to do with my AA. That will be quite a recurring theme with carriers. They will be very reluctant to come after the Minotaur due to its superior AA defences. Just going to continue to use these islands to break line of sight with these enemy battleships. The Montana has fired his main guns. He is showing quite a lot of broadside here. I can fire easily here from, from concealment. He would seem to be turning ever so slightly away. I'm just misjudging a lot of my shells here. I am plane spotted. Continue to shell this enemy Montana. He just took some torps. Some nice salvos in there. And the power of these guns is really second to none once you get in position to start raining fire on these targets. Conqueror finished off that Montana. It's going to continue to keep these islands in between myself and the target. In this case it's the remaining enemy Zhao. Enemy midway spotted but I'm going to maintain focus on this enemy Zhao. He is focused on trying to finish off our Conqueror. He's shown quite a bit of broadside. Knock out one of his guns. Here's the Confederate achievement. And the firepower on this Minotaur really is a sight to behold. There is nothing as disturbing as coming under fire from these guns. And the enemy Zhao quickly gets taken out. And that's our sixth kill of the game. We're up to 165,000 damage. Enemy Midway sending his dive bombers. And once again, he wants to have nothing to do with me. Planes are sent off towards the Republic. Enemy Midway is finally within gun range. Opening salvo 5,000. 8,000 salvo. You can see these guns really are quite scary. It's this firepower that makes the Mino a deadly foe in this game. Quickly take down a plane or two. And I'm denied the final kill, unfortunately. This game really felt like easy mode, using only two smokes and still racking up six kills and over 190k damage. Before going to the complete ship build, I've added some links including the Help Me Discord and my own personal Discord in the description below. Now on to the build. Starting with the consumables, I always stress the importance of using premium to decrease the cooldown times of your damage control and add extra charges of repair party 
hydroacoustic search and in this case a choice between smoke generator or surveillance radar. For the purposes of this first video I'll be using the smoke generator. I'll cover the surveillance radar in a separate video as the playstyle can vary dramatically. The Minotaur gets 6 ship upgrade slots starting off with Main Armaments Mod 1, Damage Control Mod 1, Aiming Systems Mod 1, Steering Gears Mod 2, Concealment System Mod 1 and finally Main Battery Mod 3. A final note here on the Legendary module for the Minotaur which is the Enhanced Smoke Generator which does increase the smoke dispersion time but reduces concealment by 5%. Personally I'm just a big fan of the increased concealment provided by the standard concealment system so I don't find the legendary module in this case particularly beneficial. Onto the captain skills I'm using the bonus British captain Jack Dunkirk starting off with priority target, adrenaline rush superintendent and concealment expert for your first 10 points. A very solid maxed out captain will then include jack of all trades, expert marksman, smokescreen expert and vigilance. When choosing to mount the radar consumable it's wise to drop smokescreen expert, jack of all trades for radio location as you'll be actively hunting targets. So let's take a look at what this build means for the ship's final stats. For survivability, Minotaur gets 43,300 hit points, further enhanced by the repair party consumable. Main artillery consists of 5 X2 152mm guns, 3 in the front and 2 in the rear, with 15.8km in range and a very fast reload speed of 2.8 seconds. For torpedoes, Minotaur gets 4 X4 launchers, two on each side, with 10 kilometers in range and decent speed and detectability. Minotaur gets an excellent AA defense rating of 97, with a very effective max firing range of 6.9 kilometers. For maneuverability, Minotaur gets a max base speed of 33.5 knots a turning circle of 660 meters and a rudder shift time of 8.3 seconds. Finally, Minotaur has a concealment rating of 73, meaning you will be surface detected at 9.1 kilometers and by aircraft at 6.9 kilometers. I'd like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos and leave a comment below. And until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it.